こんにちは。英語のシャドーイング練習教室へようこそ。司会のシャドウです。ここでは役立つ英会話を練習してネイティブ英語を身につけよう。日常生活で使える英語フレーズを10個、10回ずつ読み上げるから、その後に声に出して10回練習しよう。それじゃあ、始めるよう。Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication? Jordan, as I prepare for my new role in an international team, I've been thinking about the communication challenges I might face. Could you help me identify some key English phrases and words that are essential for effective international communication?
Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. 
Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. Absolutely, Alex. Effective communication in an international context is not just about language proficiency but also understanding and using phrases that facilitate clear and respectful interactions. Let's discuss some categories and specific phrases that can be particularly useful. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone.
That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. That sounds like a great plan. Where should we start? First, let's talk about initiating conversations in a professional setting. It's important to be polite and formal, especially when you're interacting with new colleagues. Phrases like, good morning, may I have a moment of your time, or, hello, I'm looking forward to working with you, set a positive tone. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, 
or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, are helpful. I see. And what about during meetings? I expect to be attending a lot of those. In meetings, clarity and conciseness are key. Starting your points with phrases like, I would like to suggest, or may I propose, 
are helpful. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. When you need clarification, phrases like, could you elaborate on that, or I'm not sure I follow, could you explain further, are indispensable for ensuring you understand everything being discussed. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions.
Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, 
there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. Those seem very practical. How about dealing with conflicts or disagreements? Good question. In such situations, diplomacy is crucial. Instead of directly opposing someone's idea, you might use softer phrases like, I see your point, but have we considered, or that's an interesting perspective, however, there might be another approach. These phrases help maintain respect and openness in discussions. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression.
And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. 
Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. And what if I need to send emails? Email communication in international settings must be clear and polite. Starting your emails with, I hope this message finds you well, is a warm opening. Clearly stating your purpose early in the email is also crucial, for instance, I am writing to request. Or, I would like to inform you. Closing your emails with, thank you for your attention to this matter, or, looking forward to your reply, leaves a courteous and professional impression. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction.
What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction.
What about ending conversations or meetings? I want to ensure I leave a good impression. Concluding conversations politely is essential. You might end a meeting with, thank you everyone for your contributions, or I appreciate your time today. For personal goodbyes, it was a pleasure speaking with you, or I hope we can continue this discussion later, are polite and open-ended, suggesting future interaction. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial.
This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. This is very helpful, Jordan. How can I practice these phrases to become more natural with them? Practice is key. You might consider role-playing scenarios with a colleague or a language coach. Additionally, you can watch international business meetings online and listen to how these phrases are used contextually. Writing sample emails or dialogue and having them reviewed can also be very beneficial. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role.
Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. 
With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. Thanks, Jordan. I feel much more prepared now with these phrases and tips. You're welcome, Alex. Remember, effective communication also involves being a good listener. Pay attention to cultural nuances and be adaptable. With practice, you'll become more proficient and confident in your communication skills. Good luck with your new role. の練習はこれで終わりです。お疲れ様でした。もしよかったらチャンネル登録をお願いします。それじゃ、またね。またね。